Hello my yogis and welcome back to Town Yoga. My name is Amy Town and I'm doing a series right now for my family that, who are spread across the US. This series, um, this sequence right here is specifically for my sister Tracy. She doesn't like flowing up and down too much in her yoga practice so we're going to be mostly standing. And Tracy also likes to have time to get into the pose and, and find the benefit of the stretch or strength or whatever we're kind of focusing on in that pose. So we're going to take our time getting into each pose and spending a little bit of time there. To get started, go ahead and just roll out your yoga mat and then come to standing with your feet a little wider than your hips. So Tracy also ran track and field. She was actually a thrower in track and field in college. So we used to joke a lot about um, hip circles and having to do them in awkward places. So we're going to start today with hip circles. Go ahead and send your hip over to the right. And then as you inhale, move it forward and bring it over to the left. Exhaling around the back to your starting point. And enjoy just taking a few circles here, inhaling and exhaling, linking your movements with your breath, just coming into your practice. Starting to loosen up your hips a bit. We'll take one more circle in this first direction to start. And when you come to the starting point, go ahead and reverse directions, circling the opposite way and just linking with your breath again as you exhale back and inhale forward. Let's take one more full circle to the left and then come back to center here. All right, walk your feet underneath your hips, coming to our mountain pose. Toes are forward, heels back. Weight nice and even down in your feet. We'll take a few arm circles from here. As you inhale, sweep your arms out, up, overhead, maybe even looking up. And exhale your palms to your heart. Take two more, inhaling. Exhale, one more nice big stretch. And exhaling your palms to your heart, pausing here. Let's take a few storks on each side. This is gonna help warm up our balance, get our hips nice and strong, get our core working a little bit. So ground down through your right foot and begin to lift your left knee up, sending your hands up overhead, pausing for a breath here. And then settling back down, grounding through your left foot. Inhale your right knee up, hands overhead. And exhale down. We'll take two more on each side. Just nice, slow and controlled. Gently challenging our balance here. And last one. Exhaling down, beautiful. From here, we're gonna heel toe out our feet nice and wide or just kind of walk nice and wide. So your feet are wider than your hips. Your toes are forward and heels are facing back. And just bring your hands down to your hips to start. If you've been sitting for a long day or just tend to generally have tight hip flexors, take a moment here. Squeeze your glutes and just send your hips forward a few inches. Feeling a nice stretch in the front of your body. And slowly coming back to center. We're going to take our warrior two into a dancing warrior series. So bring your attention to your left foot and just draw your left heel back towards the midline of your body turning your toes to the top of your mat. Your back foot here, your right foot, just let this heel come back a few inches. So that foot's at about 45 degrees. And then look again to your left and bend your left knee out over your toes. You're stacking your knee over your heel and you can see your big toe just on the inside. That means you have a good lift through your arch and you're engaging the outside edge of your hip to keep that line. Weight is down into your heel and then out through your toes. 
and the same amount of weight pressing into your back foot, pressing into the pinky blade there. And you might adjust the angle of your heel to find what's most comfortable. And once you do, extend your arms out, end to end, taking your gaze over your fingertips as you breathe here in your warrior two pose, finding a stretch, but also challenging your strength. For our dancing warrior, turn your right, your left palm up and then reach it forward a bit before sweeping it overhead, your back arm coming down your back leg. There's a tendency in this reverse warrior for the top shoulder to collapse down. So feel your shoulders stacked as you reach up, staying bent into that front knee, a nice big stretch through your left ribs here. And your gaze can be wherever you'd like. You can turn it down or up or anywhere in between. Just be mindful to find some comfort in your neck. On your next inhale, lift back to warrior two. Pausing here for a breath. We'll come to our modified side angle next. Take your left elbow down to your left knee and reach your right hand straight up to the sky. Pausing here for a moment. Again, that tendency is for this top shoulder to collapse down, so really reach up. And then if you'd like, you can turn your thumb behind you, palm facing in front, and then extend your right hand like an, like an extension of your back leg here. So one line of energy from the edge of your foot all the way through your fingertips. You find a nice big stretch in your side bodies here. If you find your shoulder collapsing down, maybe just return your hand back up and stay there, yogi's choice for another breath. As you inhale, lift back up to your warrior two, pausing for a moment, and then setting your hands down straight in your left leg, turning your toes forward, and just walk your feet out a little bit until they're back in a line, toes forward, heels back. And we'll just take that little hip stretch, squeezing glutes and sending your hips forward again. Back up to the center line. We're gonna take that warrior two dancing warrior on the opposite side, drawing your right heel back towards your body, pointing your toes to the other edge of your mat. Your back heel here is just gonna slide a few inches back, finding the angle that feels most comfortable for you, lining up front heel with back arch and then bend your right knee out over your toes looking for that big toe on the inside as you press through your heel and out through each toe same amount of energy coming down through your back leg here and you can adjust the uh, width of your stance maybe walk it out a little bit if you want it to be a little bit longer once you feel comfortable in your feet you're going to extend your arms out looking out over your fingertips and warrior two. Taking a few breaths here as you challenge yourself. For reverse warrior, turn your right palm up. Reach it forward and sweep it up overhead as your back arm comes down your back leg. A nice big stretch on the right ribs here as you continue to bend into your knee. Back legs straight and strong. Shoulders in one line as if between two panes of glass here. Take a nice big inhale. And exhale back up to warrior two, pausing for a breath. From here, you're gonna reach forward, taking your right elbow down to your right knee and reaching your left palm up, fingers to the sky. Finding that stack in your shoulders here, nice length through your side bodies as you stay bending into your knee. And then maybe you'll turn your palm to the back top of your mat, this side of your mat, and reach it up overhead. One line of energy from your back foot all the way through your fingertips here as you breathe.
On your next inhale, lift back up to warrior two. Take a full breath here. Before you straighten your leg, bring your hands to your hips and just turn your toes center, making little adjustments with your feet until they're in a straight line, toes forward, heels back. And we'll take one more hip stretch here, just squeezing your glutes, sending your hips forward a bit. And then coming back to neutral, we're gonna take a goddess squat. For goddess squat, you're gonna draw your heels in and your toes out. The angle is gonna be a little different for each person, but what you're looking for is for your knees to go out over your toes. So if you bend your knees and they're really far in, turn your toes to kind of match the angle of your knees here. Depends on how tight your hips are. So when you find that angle that seems good to you, you're gonna bring hands to hips and then bend your knees out over your toes, sending your hips down. Finding that challenging level for you where you feel your quads working, drawing your navel up to spine, and then to keep a nice long back, let's send our palms up, bending at the elbows like you're holding two trays by your sides. We're just gonna take a few breaths here in this goddess squat, challenging our strength a little bit. It's gonna be coming a little lower. Let's take two more breaths here in Goddess. And then inhale, straighten your legs, arms to the sky. And exhale your hands to your hips as you heel toe your feet in towards each other. Coming back to the center of your mat here. And now we're gonna come down to kneeling. So just step one foot forward the opposite back and then come down to one knee and then the other. Our last series here is going to be a flow between gate pose and a modified side plank. So for gate pose you're going to ground down through your right knee and send your left foot out to the side. You can come onto the edge of your foot like I do here. I just kind of let my big toe edge rest or you can bring the sole of your foot down. It's whatever's more comfortable for you, especially in the knee joint. Just pay attention to what feels best there. And again, we're looking for that stacked energy shoulder to shoulder as we reach over. So inhale, sweep your arms out, up, overhead. Exhale, lower your left hand down to your left leg and then sweep your right arm over again. Feeling the shoulders in a line as you stretch through your right side body here in your gate pose. And take a few breaths. Being sure not to press down on your knee, bring your hand up if you need to press down so you're not pressing right on that joint. On your next inhale, lift back up to the sky. Exhale, lower your right hand down to your right side. Reaching your left hand up, you're in a modified side plank here. You can stay just here. If you want a little more challenge in your core and outer hip, you can lift your left foot up, flexing your toes to your shin. As you press through your palm, reaching up with your fingertips, straight line of energy here again. And then setting your foot down. Inhale, lift back up to the center. We're going to take that same series again as you exhale, lower your left hand, sweeping your right arm over. Pausing for just a breath or two. Before you inhale up. And exhale, lower your right hand down. Taking a moment here to feel that stack in your shoulders, and if you'd like, lifting your left foot up. As you exhale down, inhale back to the center, and then exhale, draw your knee in, your hands back to heart. And we'll take that same flow on our second side. So grounding down through your left knee, take your right foot out to the side, Yogi's choice, however you'd like to position your foot stacked or sole down. And then sweep your arms out, up, overhead. 
and exhale your right hand to right leg, left arm sweeps up and over. You might notice a difference in tightness on your two sides. If there's one that's tighter, maybe give it an extra round today. On your next inhale, lift up and exhale your left hand down, right fingers up to the sky as you pause here, feeling that stack in your shoulders, your fingers pointing to the top of your mat on this bottom hand. And if you'd like, you can lift your leg up, flexing your toes to your shin, feeling the outside edge of your right hip engage here, pausing for a breath before setting your foot down and inhaling back to the center. We'll take another round. Exhaling your right hand to the right, left arm sweeps overhead. Pausing here for a breath or two. And then inhale back up. Exhale, left hand down, right fingers to the sky, pausing here. And if you'd like, you can lift that foot again, working the outside edge of your hip. Before setting down, inhaling back up, and exhaling to the center. Last option here is if you'd like to tuck your toes underneath your heels and then sit your hips back. You can get a nice stretch over the bottoms of your feet this way, especially if you've been walking around a lot that day. Thank you so much for joining me in this yoga flow. If you're the type of yogi who sometimes enjoys not having a downward facing dog in your practice, you like to stay a little bit more upright. If you're like me and my sister with low blood pressure, low blood pressure or someone with vertigo, this is a great option. Feel free to share it with others who might feel the same way. And of course, join Town Yoga. You can visit my website and visit me on Patreon if you'd like to get involved. Bringing hands to heart center for a moment here so I can let you know that the light in me honors and respects the light in you. Namaste.